And today's crews finally started removing wreckage of the flight MH17 from eastern Ukraine some four months after the crash that killed nearly 300 people. They're hauling chunks of the aircraft to the Netherlands where they plan to reconstruct a portion of it. The process of clearing out the debris is expected to take several days. And this has been a very precarious process investigating a commercial airline crash in the middle of a war zone. I'm joined now by Michael Busiku. He's with the Organization for Security and Cooperation in Europe, which has been monitoring the situation in Ukraine and trying to facilitate access. He's joining us now via Skype from Kiev. So, Michael, what were the crews able to achieve today in recovering this aircraft? Uh, good to be back with you, uh, really. So, well, it was obviously a very emotional day for all of us who were involved in this. Uh, as you know, we were there uh, 24 hours after the plane came down. And now, several months later, finally, finally, that action to get the debris out of there. Now, the crews did uh, manage to uh, retrieve quite a bit of fuselage. And really, so they were working on what we call the burn site. This is where the midsection of the economy class section of the aircraft came down, the wings, fuel tanks, landing gear. And there was a fireball when that plane hit the ground. Uh, temperatures, we're told by experts, went up to 1600 Celsius. So there's not much there recognizable in terms of uh, remains. However, they did manage to find uh, some human re remains today, and they did manage to find some personal belongings. And I should also add that the mayor of Grabova, the nearby town, personally handed over some personal belongings like uh, passports, credit cards, ATM cards, that sort of thing. How difficult was it for the crews to work in this war zone? What is the security situation like? Well, you know, it's hard to believe, but even from day one, there was no security perimeter there. So the, the site is totally vulnerable to man-made and natural factors. And also, as you pointed out correctly, it's in the middle of a conflict zone. Just today, um, our monitors uh, saw shelling happening about a kilometer and a half away. And this, the, there are two factors that are going to be dependent on whether the recovery effort can continue tomorrow and the following days. And number one is weather. It's getting cold and uh, snow is expected. And secondly, the security situation. Um, you'll, you'll see from our reports that we've been documenting some very, very worrisome buildup of uh, military uh, equipment, unmarked military vehicles in that region of the country. So it's very tricky business uh, indeed. Tell us a little bit more. We know that Russia is denying that it is supporting the rebels and sending uh, troops and also military hardware.